The first shot, well, it was interesting. I uh, just graduated from Lehigh and I was looking for uh, employment opportunities, not necessarily in aerospace. I was a mechanical engineer uh, and um, uh, Bell Labs was hiring at that time uh, with a wonderful program where they would send you off to grad school. <clears throat> so I uh, had them send me to MIT and then when I got back uh, from MIT with my master's, then I was a full-time employee and my initial assignment was to the Nike X program, <laughs> the anti-ballistic missile system uh, of the United States, so, which eventually became Safeguard. And it was just an amazing place to start a career. But that was my initial uh, entry into the space program, I guess, uh, from the military side. I actually, I went uh, through a number of different uh, uh, invocations to my career at Bell Labs and other places. I'd actually been in cellular for a while and was doing some systems engineering for the for the military. Uh, and we had a contract actually with the National Security Agency to develop a secure version of Unix for them to use at Fort Meade. <clears throat> so we spent uh, two or three years. It was the only part of my career where, where I managed software engineers, which was a totally different experience. <laughs> I mean, they were quite different than hardware engineers in their, in their culture and so forth, so I had to adjust. Uh, but it was an interesting time, and we got that uh, uh, certified by the agency and, and use uh, you know, back in the, um, in the late 80s and early 90s. They used it extensively. I'm not sure what they're doing now, of course, but, but uh, they were always a favorite of a Unix operating system, and they, they just wanted it a little tighter on the security. Uh, when I first came back from NASA, there wasn't too much going on in our space program, so I was on a, these other military projects. And then when, um, when we uh, decided to start building a new generation of Telstar satellites, then they had me come in as the uh, program manager for the Telstar, uh, 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 that was Telstar 4 family at that time. Well, it was an amazing time because, uh, you know, the moon landings had been over in 1972, so it was kind of quiet at NASA. Then in 78, they hired us. Uh, thinking it was one year from the first shuttle launch. It ended up being three years from the first shuttle launch, but that was okay because we had time to go through our training and do a lot of the tasks that were uh, uh, important uh, for the astronaut office to support across the program. You know, for example, I was the uh, astronaut representative to the uh, main engine testing in Bay St. Louis and uh, Huntsville, um, and uh, did a lot of the or early planning for, um, for rendezvous and, and so forth. So it was a nice time <clears throat> to be at NASA with a new program coming and just a lot of excitement. Well, it was the coolest mission to be on early in the shuttle program because it was the first time, it was the first rendezvous, it was the first time that we were going to grapple a satellite and repair it. Uh, it was a satellite that was uh, designed to be repaired by the shuttle uh, here at uh, Goddard, actually. And um, so we did the rendezvous and it had been disabled for about four years and we knew exactly what was wrong with it. So we practiced for two years on how to repair it. So we did the rendezvous, then I grabbed it with a mechanical arm, and then uh, uh, two of my uh, crewmates got to do the spacewalk, two spacewalks to repair it, and then we put it back in the service. <clears throat> yeah, so after that it was kind of nice, because NASA could say we, we were doing things not with a space shuttle, and then of course Hubble came next, and then uh, the space station ultimately. I guess I, uh, my first management assignment was uh, as a supervisor at Bell Labs, and, uh, and that was a, a, a piece of cake in the sense that uh, I was managing uh, a half a dozen engineers that were very, very bright <laughs> and very motivated. So, so mostly I just had to uh, define the mission that we were doing and, uh, and give them all the support they need and kind of get out of their way <laughs> a little bit. You know, it was, uh, uh, it, yeah, as my career moved on, my managerial uh, uh, um, responsibilities became more complex, you know, but starting off with a bunch of engineers like that is, is really a, a, a nice way to begin the, uh, that kind of management experience. Well, yeah, I, I mentioned earlier that I had a group of uh, about 50 software engineers I was managing that, <coughs> uh, for that Unix project. Uh, that was quite different because you know, uh, hardware engineers are typical engineers that I've dealt with. You know, come in to work at you know, 7 or 8 in the morning and work real hard, and by 5 o'clock they're about ready to go home. Uh, that was the culture I was you know, involved with mostly and in, in, in how engineers you know, do their daily uh, job. Uh, software engineers might come in at noon and go home at two in the morning. <laughs> they might come in at three in the morning and go home at lunchtime. I mean, there's just a different kind of culture. Uh, and uh, so I very quickly realized that I had to adjust to do things the way they uh, uh, do, do things in the software world, you know, having not been too, uh, too much experienced in that area. Uh, so uh, I think it's an important uh, lesson for, for managers is to 
uh, understand the organization you're coming into and, and their culture and all and, and uh, behave accordingly. Well, I, I think the first thing is to be able to identify the mission, <clears throat> the job that we're doing. Um, in, our, in our case, we were growing Skynet very rapidly at the time. We, we left AT&T with only one satellite on orbit. And uh, uh, seven years later, we had uh, 10 on orbit, you know, so we did a, a tremendous expansion. <clears throat> but keeping our team focused on uh, the growth, uh, while at the same time, the quality uh, support of our customers, which were the, the main broadcast networks, you know, so it was very serious uh, that we not drop the ball in, in terms of quality. Uh, so keeping the team focused on that. And then, uh, again, I had a, just a great uh, team, both on the engineering side and on the, on the business side. Uh, most of us had come from AT&T as a unit. And, um, you know, we hired and <clears throat> expanded quite a bit you know, during that seven years, but it was, it was quite a wonderful experience. I encourage them to think about the aerospace industry, of course, and most of the courses I teach in our mechanical engineering department are aerospace courses. But I also warn them that it's a bit of a bumpy ride sometimes career-wise because there's a little more turbulence in the industry than maybe something like civil engineering that's a little more uh, a little more stable, uh, but at the same time, they're the most interesting problems that we work on and the most challenging problems that we work on. And, uh, and quite a few of my, my better students particularly just, just really get excited about, about that, uh, that, that opportunity. So I have students at JPL and Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab at Boeing, Lockheed, and NASA, of course, and SpaceX. You know, so I've got students in all those organizations now just really enjoying their, their careers. Yeah, the, the, the industry's been pretty good, and, and Lehigh offers you know, good students uh, graduating uh, for, the, uh, for the companies to, to look at. Uh, a few have wanted to only to go to NASA, for example. They don't want to work for the companies, they want to work for NASA. And a couple of them have had internships and they had to wait like a year or two, and then they get in the right hiring sequence at NASA. Uh, but they eventually, they all, they all succeed, they all find a, the job that they wanted. It may just take a year or two sometimes. Well, I think uh, I read Colin Powell's book recently. He had a really uh, 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 interesting point that he made there. He said all his time in the Army, uh, uh, as he was growing up from a lieutenant to a captain and so forth, he tried to know a little bit about everything going on in the organization, but he also tried to be the, the resident expert in one area. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. And, and um, yeah, otherwise, I, you know, I try to encourage my kids to look for those uh, mentors. I'll speak some about this today. Uh, uh, the importance of mentors uh, for anyone's career, and I certainly had a, a, some wonderful mentors along, along the way, uh, and to look and to try to cultivate those relationships um, uh, when they're young uh, and getting started, uh, that's, that's so, so valuable. Yeah, well, well certainly uh, flying in space is always memorable. And uh, our mission, particularly when we repaired Solar Max, was you know, something I'll, I'll never forget. Um, but uh, interestingly, uh, uh, and the Air Force was wonderful too. I, I had so many good experiences uh, over 20 years, mostly on the weekends, you know, flying uh, fighters for the Air Force. And lots of good friendships you know, remain from that. Uh, <clears throat> those were the technical challenges that I, that I really uh, enjoyed uh, those years. Uh, but actually, in terms of uh, reward, I feel the last 10 years I've been teaching now at Lehigh has its own set of rewards. I mean, it's really just wonderful to be around the young people today and to, uh, to help uh, mentor them to, to, to get started in their careers. And, and they're really great young people. So I, uh, yeah, I feel very uh, lucky to have had all, all those opportunities and to f end up you know, where I am right now, where I can uh, you know, slow down a little bit maybe and, and teach and uh, take time with, uh, with the young people there and becoming into more in industry. Mm -hmm.